retail supply chain and where we sit is kind of right in the middle of that create with retailers so we work with all the large retailers to to create special programs with them so that consumer packaged goods companies that ship product into them can do it in a way that's more efficient and more efficient <clears throat> more efficient really means something different to every retailer and to every supplier consumer packaged goods company so it's a whole slew of programs at different retailers. I started k back in 1999, early 2000, um, in California. I moved out to Fayetteville in, uh, well, 10 years ago. So we're about 17 years old. Uh, we're about $200 million company now. And we're keep on growing quickly. And as the long tail becomes more important to retailers, the model that we have makes more and more sense and collaboration you know amongst retailers supply chain companies and uh cpg companies becomes even more relevant every day you never really stop scaling you know the business just keeps on scaling every morning you wake up and you've got some new epiphany on how to scale the business and some new challenge that you know what you thought might work yesterday might not actually work tomorrow and that's i guess that's really what makes it all pretty exciting i can't even imagine this probably this industry wasn't like that you know a decade ago but now it's incredible the amount of change and how you've got to proactively deal with that you know as you scale up a company like k-stack um, and we're starting a new division now called Supply Pike. So I get to see it all over again. But at every stage, the most important thing, is, when I was a student in school, probably some old CEO like me came in and said, the most important thing is people. Well, and I probably thought, well, that sounds really good, but I don't know if it's real or not. The most important thing at any company is people. So as you scale, there are different kinds of people with different kinds of skills and almost this in, innate ability to work in an environment that's at a certain size, I think. So it does, it's not a smooth thing. I mean, I think we've over time we've had people come aboard. Some of them have been great during a period of time. Some of them have been not right for the period that we were at in and then some of them probably are, are not right yet but will be right soon and then there is this cultural element of the business that's absolutely critical so if you've got a doesn't mean everybody has to be the same by any stretch of any imagination in fact it's probably the opposite of that everybody has to be completely different almost like a family but then they have to be able to somehow work together and sometimes that's really a strain you know there's also, probably not a day goes by where we don't have that sort of strain of relationships that create the culture that's this unified culture. Um, but we figure out how to do it. But you, it's not easy to find the, the right people with the skills and the, the cultural fit. And I think in some respects, you know, we've tried to, you see us out there networking with people. And it's... I think important because it's not as simple as you call people in and you have an interview and you do this 45 minute interview. I don't always think you, you, sometimes you just can't figure out what to do with somebody in a 45 minute interview. But if you can see them in different environments, you know, bring them, bring somebody new to an actual meeting, which has been pretty effective. Let them come to a presentation, uh, have them actually help us solve a problem that we're working on. And then you can sort of see what the fit is like. So that's been a, that's an ever change. I mean, we keep learning how to do that better every day. The people, the process, and the technology, I think all kind of come together or they don't. And if they don't come together, I don't think you can, it's pretty hard to be successful. So the people come in at the right times. They have a group that works together and that's great. The processes go also go through these sort of hurdles or thresholds. So I can see it happen with other companies too. You, you hit certain size marks or certain challenges and you have to be open to 
tweaking the processes a little bit sometimes or sometimes just starting over. So we've done that a lot of times to the point now where we're, I think as an organization, we've been become comfortable completely changing a process. And in the role that we sit in with the business that we are in, we've become pretty flexible on process because we need to be really comfortable when we work with one, say one retailer, one kind of technology, one kind of process, or with one consumer packaged goods company, we have to be able to sort of roll with new processes. So I think our organization has gotten pretty good at learning to do that, and then we use that internally too, so that we'll, you know, we're okay with, we've been doing, we almost have a cultural bias to, we've been doing something a certain way for a really long time, it's probably not the right way anymore. Like our cultural bias now is if we've been doing it a certain way, it's probably something that's not right. Not that this is right because we've been doing it a long time like this. I think that's, I, I, I kind of assume that most companies do that now, but as I work with them internally, I see that they don't do that. That is very much part of our, you know, inherent culture now, I think. You know, the market keeps on changing and then our team has gotten pretty good at understanding that even though it might sound like we can't do it, we'll figure out how to do it. So we might not know the answer. And I think that's, it's kind of built into sort of an agile methodology in technology development, but it bleeds uh, in, into the business process, which is, you know, you don't set out this long step-by-step -step process of how you're going to get to someplace in three years. You set out some sort of a vision of how we want to do something differently down the road, and then we try a lot of things. And I think it's really, it's iteration. So we iterate with clients. And the key on the iteration to me is you can iterate in a vacuum all you want. You can spend a lot of money. You can try to make stuff go really quickly. I see it with a lot of Silicon Valley startups that have a lot of money. They've got a lot of money and a lot of pressure to make it happen faster. But they don't always have a lot of what we have here, I think, which is we have a lot of partners to work with. We've got a lot of customers to work with. We have a lot of consumer packaged goods companies. We've got a lot of retail experts. We've got a lot of supply chain management experts. We have the university that is engaged a lot. And we've got government here that in other places I see, I look at it and I don't, I don't know what the government does really, but here I see it and I see our local government, our state government, that's actually sort of understands business growth <clears throat> and is very engaged in working together. So if you get all the clients, the trading partners, university, government people together and you iterate, you can make some stuff happen really quickly and inexpensively. You can make a mistake, you can pivot, you can go back and it really moves a lot faster. We're trying to, we see this convergence of supply chain management, retail, consumer packaged goods, and we're in the middle of it. And there are areas in the middle of it. So what's great is that we get talent that is exposed to it already and understands the concept. And businesses that people think they're in there might not even really be in anymore. You know, like you, you think I'm a retailer or I'm a transportation company or I'm a brand or whatever it is. They're, the lines, when I say convergence, what I see is that the lines are just going to completely blur more and more over time. And you don't get that by reading about it. You get that by living in it. And I think what's so unique here is that we kind of live in that. 